Hey guys, what's going on? Professor here, and today I'm back with another edition of the Top 10 Best LEGO Star Wars Sets by Year. Today I'm going to be looking at the Top 10 LEGO Star Wars Sets from the year of 2001. So already in the third year of uh, this little series here, so progressed through this pretty quickly. And so just before I get into the actual review, I just want to let everybody know that um, according to Brickset, which is what I'm using to determine my uh, sets, there were only uh, 10 LEGO Star Wars sets released in this year, so I actually have uh, every LEGO Star Wars set uh, released in the year of 2001 on this list, so this is a complete list, or ranking rather, of the uh, Star Wars sets from 2001 and my personal opinion on them. Uh, as always, this is just my opinion, so this is not a consensus, you must agree with me sort of video, but if you do enjoy this series, uh, go down, smash that like button. Uh, if you're new, consider subscribing. I'm doing all sorts of LEGO Star Wars stuff right now, I'm branching out doing some Ninjago, uh, reviews, comparisons, uh, doing more and more top 10 videos as well. And then let me know down below in the comment section how you would rate the these 10 LEGO Star Wars sets from the year 2001. So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it at number 10 which is set number 8008, the uh, Technic Stormtrooper. This one sold for $35 with 361 pieces, and this one really doesn't need much explanation. You can see the Stormtroopers in the back. You can see the Technic Stormtrooper here. They really don't look that much alike, honestly. The legs look super skinny and stiff and awkward. The arms are just weird. I mean, the helmet is off. This entire set is just terrible. If there was any other, almost any other set uh, that was released in this year, this would not have made the list. The only reason this is on the list is because uh, there were only 10 sets released. So don't be questioning me with what I'm putting on this list. It was just that there were only 10 sets this year. Honestly, the only thing that is even somewhat redeeming about this set is the um, little like shooter that it has. But other than that, this entire set is just a train wreck. Uh, so yeah, that's why this one's down here. Uh, moving on to number 9 is the other Technic set from this year, set uh, 8007, the Technic C-3PO. This one also sold for $35 um, and has 341 pieces. Uh, this one isn't uh, nearly as bad as the Stormtrooper, and normally I think the droids look pretty good, but this one is just off. I mean, it's, it's okay. I think the head is probably the best part about it. It's not terrible. Um, but the arms are just kind of weird, like in the way they tried to do the fingers. I don't know, the body is see-through, just like pretty much every Technic uh, Star Wars set. Uh, I, do, I do like how in the, uh, like his right leg, um, how they did the silver down there, just for like in terms of like accuracy to the movies and things like that. I do like how they did that, but overall this set, uh, similar to the Stormtrooper, is just not accurate to C-3PO. I wish they would have put a picture of him behind there, because it's, it's just bad. Uh, and that's why this one's down here. Uh, it's only slightly better than the Stormtrooper. But yeah, so we'll be moving on to number 8, which is set number 7106, the Droid Escape, which sold for $6 and had 45 pieces. Uh, this is a nice little set. Um, I don't really care for it that much. You get two pretty common minifigures. Um, at the time, you get a C-3PO minifigure, and then you get an R2-D2 astromech droid. Um, that sticker that you can see there, or like, that, like, what looks like printing there is actually a sticker. Um, it peels very easily, so that's not something that I really like about this. And overall, I think this is just kind of one of those sets that they were releasing at the time at fill to fill. Uh, they have a lot of these, like, cheap $6, $10 sets um, that you don't really see anything of today, uh, except maybe, like, a battle pack. But, yeah, uh, early Star Wars, they did these kinds of things. I didn't really care for them too much, and that's why this one is down here. Moving on. So number seven is set number 7126, the Battle Droid Carrier. Uh, and again, $10, 133 pieces. Uh, I mean, this is an okay set, but this is not something that I would recommend, like at the time at least, that you would like buy on your own, which is mostly why this, why this is down here. It does include the six Battle Droids that you can see on the right. Um, and then the one that's actually driving it is a pilot droid. It's difficult to see, but you ha it has the blue printing uh, right there on like the droid torso. 
which uh, signifies that it is a pilot droid, which is something that I like. Uh, they did include a nice pilot droid in this, so this is definitely something for $10 if you were building like a droid army or something for whatever reason, um, then this is definitely a set that you should pick up. But once again, just not a set that I really care for. Um, it doesn't really look good like necessarily on display. This is definitely something that uh, would be released as like a sort of battle pack today, and this actually looks very similar to the original uh, droid battle pack that was released. Um, I don't know. This is just not something that I care for very much, and that's why this is down here. Uh, moving on to number six, set number 7186, Watto's Junkyard. Uh, this one sold for $50 with 443 pieces. Um, this one isn't that bad, honestly. The, like, top of this year is very tightly contested for me. The bottom was pretty easy, but once you start getting to six and beyond, it's very thin margins. Um, I really do like this set. I like the Watto minifigure in that was included. Um, I just think the pod racer, the blue one that you can see here, you can, all the like green pieces and stuff that you see over to the right can be formed into a pod racer. And I actually like that pod racer that's built. Um, I just think the blue one that is shown just looks super weird. Like the giant like square engines are just off and like the cockpit, I don't know. Like that giant tan thing that you see, I don't have a problem with that because that's just connecting the cockpit to the engines. They didn't really have anything else that you could do at the time, so I understand what they were trying to do with that. But I just don't like the way that the engines look on this one. Um, but even so, this is definitely better than all the sets before it, in my opinion. Um, but oh, I, there was just so much wrong with this larger blue pod racer that I just couldn't get past. Um, and that's why this one is down at number six. So moving on to number five is set number 10018, the uh, UCS Darth Maul bust, which was sold for $150, uh, 1,868 pieces. Uh, this was definitely like a good value for money. So that's not why this one is down here. It's not because it was a bad value. <coughs> it's because it's just so brick like heavy. And I think it looks really uh, like janky. I think that at the time that this was made, there just weren't enough like slopes. Like I feel like they could have like, I don't know, like smoothed out the shoulders or like, I don't know. It, it just looks very, it looks very rigid and that's not something that I like. I do think that it does look like Darth Maul. I did think that they did a good job of at least making it look like Darth Maul. Like I look at that, I know it's Darth Maul. I'm not thinking it's some other character like the like Technic sets or something like that. Like this is a pretty good model and that's why this one is at number five. But moving on now to number four, which is set number 7127, the Imperial ATST. This one sold for $10, uh, had 107 pieces. And I think that this was a really good um, early model for the ATST. Obviously, like I said, uh, earlier with the 107 pieces, it's very small, and that's kind of difficult to tell in the picture. In the picture, it does look like it would be a medium-ish size, but this is definitely a very small ATST. Um, but yeah, the legs are probably the worst part about this set. You can see they just look kind of weird. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, the legs just look a little bit weird. I think the head looks very polished. They did a very good job with the, using the slopes that they did have to make a very clean uh, shaped head. You can see this one comes with uh, the Chewbacca minifigure, which is a minifigure that at the time was a pretty good pickup. Uh, I don't really think it was in many sets other than maybe like the Millennium Falcon from the year prior. But yeah, I think this was a very good stepping stone in the uh, line of the ATST. So uh, that's why I put this one at number four. And moving on to number three, is going to be set number 7146, the uh, TIE, original TIE Fighter. Well, the original TIE Fighter. There have been like TIE, other like TIE Fighter um, renditions before this, but this is the first uh, true, just regular TIE Fighter. Um, so for $20 here in the US, 171 pieces. Came with the two minifigures down there, TIE Fighter Pilot and the Stormtrooper. And it's difficult to see in the back, but there's behind, like a little bit to the right of the Stormtrooper, uh, that little build there is included in the set. It's like a little stand for the uh, TIE Fighter, which is something that I really like. Um, honestly, this would probably make it up to number two, number one, possibly, if it was in the right color scheme. This is about the exact same as what uh, the TIE Fighters today look like. Obviously, with 171 pieces, it's going to be smaller 
than the TIE Fighters of today, but the overall model of the TIE Fighter has not changed at all throughout the years of LEGO Star Wars, and I think that's because the or original one that you see right here was just so good. I think they did a very good job of designing it. Um, the cockpit looks amazing. That piece right there is still in use today. The cockpit piece with the print on it. <coughs> the dome piece at the top, sorry for all the coughing guys, is also used today. Um, like I said, with, if this was in the correct gray and black color scheme, uh, this would be an almost perfect set for the time. But yeah, that's why this one is down to number three. So number two here is going to be set number 7166, the Imperial Shuttle. This one sold for $35 and has 238 pieces. This set, I believe, is the first set uh, for almost every minifigure in this uh, set. It's difficult to see, but in the cockpit, there's a pilot there that is also included along with the other minifigures you see. You have the Emperor Palpatine and the two Imperial Guards. So if at the time you were looking to collect some Imperial Guards, this is a great way to do it. Um, with two Imperial Guards for only $35. And then you get this amazing Imperial Shuttle. The Imperial Shuttle is just one of my favorite Star Wars ships in general. I think it has a really good design. And I think LEGO did a very good job of executing its design um, without having it look uh, too rigid like a lot of other early LEGO Star Wars sets. Um, the wings have a lot of bricks exposed, but I think that looks okay because it does look flat enough to me. Um, the minifigures, as I said, are great. Um, this is, I believe, like I said, the first Emperor Palpatine. He comes with like a little cane there and um, the pilot inside. But yeah, overall, I think this is a really good set. The only knock um, on this set, I think, is the price for the pieces that you get. You only get 238 pieces for $35. I think maybe you knock it down to 30 bucks. And then, I mean, I, I still think, I don't know the like sales numbers from the times, but I would assume that this sold very well. And I feel like it would have sold even better if you knock five bucks off the price. Uh, but yeah, that's why this one is at number two. And if you couldn't figure it out already with the only 10 sets this year, <coughs> the number one set, excuse me again, is set number 10019, the Rebel Blockade Runner, or the Tantive 4, whichever one you want to call it. It's The Tantive 4 is a specific name for one of the Rebel Blockade Runners, but that's the official name for this set. So for $200 with 1,747 pieces, and this is just an amazing set. Obviously, the price per piece is a little low, but I mean, you're getting an extremely detailed model. Um, this is a set that sells for a ton of money today, so this is a set that was definitely valuable, um, and if you were interested in it, should definitely have picked it up at the time of its release. But you can just see from this picture with all the weaponry on the outside, all the little bricks and everything, this is this is an amazing LEGO Star Wars set. Um, the only, I mean, I don't really have much to knock on it. it. It just looks amazing. With all the pieces they had, there's not many, like, bricks exposed that look bad. Like, obviously, there's a lot of bricks exposed, but I think it all works together with the way that the Rebel Blockade Runner looks in the movie. And I just think this is an amazing set. Um, but yeah, that's why I put this one at number one. And that will conclude this video for the top 10 LEGO Star Wars sets of 2001 so if you did enjoy this video like i said go down there smash that like button if you're new consider subscribing and then let me know down below in the comment section what your top 10 lego star wars sets are from 2001 and that will be all for this video so guys i will see you next time peace